our expert, Kai Harvey Gonzalez, our host number one. Cherry Louise Michon, our host number two. Henry Muga, our audience number one. Carl Justin Santos, our audience number two. Jeremy Paul Villena, our audience number three. John Patrick Lasarna, our audience number four. And the uh, two extra is uh, our extra audience. And yours truly, I am Angelica Teodosi, your audience number five. And sit back, relax, and enjoy our show. Thank you. Welcome to the KNC Talk Show, together with Mr. Moore. Good morning, everyone. I'm Val Gonzalez. And I'm Terry Michelle. And we will be your hosts for this event. Today, we're going to talk about the problems of our audience, uh, about children having separated or deceased parents, and what effect does it cause to the children. And now, let's... And now let's call on a well-known counselor from Quezon City who has helped a lot of people with this particular problem. Let's welcome Mr. Lawrence Bora. Thank you for inviting me here today. It's my pleasure to be here. Again, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bora, for your short and wonderful speech. Uh, it is also our pleasure. It is also our pleasure that you accepted our invitation to be with us here. To be here with us today. Let's not make it any longer, and let's start asking our audience about their problems. Let us start with a teacher who has a student that is dealing the separation of his parents. Uh, sir, what's your name? I'm I'm Henry Kula, and I'm a teacher from Saint Thomas. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, can you tell us what your student is currently dealing with and what do you want to ask to our guest speaker? Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to ask Mr. Bora. Mr. Bora, you... What do the children, our students, after the field when their parents get separated? And because some of my students is this kind eh, is having this kind of situation because but but they're not showing their feelings okay mr borja mr henry said that his students have a problem about their parental separation and he asked what would the children feel when their family gets separated okay thank you for your question mr Muga. children tend to not show what they feel through these situations, but certainly they feel sad or frustrated frustrated in these situations, especially when the child is really close to his or her parents. It's really going to be hard for the child to feel happy in these situations. I have one more question to, to the um, is, there a, is there a way how to prove certain past or forget their feelings? I think it's impossible for the child to actually forget this kind of situation, but to surpass it, the child must learn to accept what has happened. It's not going to be a quick process, but in time, they will eventually accept it and move on from there. Thank you, Mr. Um, is there another question? Okay, what is your question? Good day, sir. I am Angelica Diagnosis, uh, and currently teaching at the Bardine High School. And my question is here. How do the children recover from the death of one of their parents, and how can I help them from their problem? Um, thank you for your question, Ms. Angelica. About that particular scenario, children recover from the death of their parents in time. That time can differ depending on the bond of the child and the parents. There's no actual timetable uh, for when the children recovers. It can take years before they can recover from it. It takes time and acceptance. I know it's hard to accept that someone you love is now gone, but accepting that fact is the first step in recovery. It will take a long time, but that is normal and there is no need to rush it. We can help them through the simplest ways that being, being there for their sake and comforting them when they express their feelings. But um, other than that, it really is up to them to move, accept reality and move on from there. Thank you, Mr. Borja. Uh, okay, is there anyone else who would like to uh, 
ask a question. <laughs> so what's your question, sir? Good day, Mr. Boha. Uh, I'm Carlos Santos uh, from Site Department for my U.S. School at Belo University. My question to you, sir, is in your own opinion, in your own opinion, and being a good citizen, uh, what can a student like me do to prepare for the possibilities that can happen to my class? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, in my opinion, the best thing to do to prepare is that we must be ready to accept anything that will happen in our lives. If we just dwell in the past, we will only feel pain and regret. It's inevitable that unfortunate scenarios will happen in our lives. We just have to be ready to accept it. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Do you have any more questions to ask? No further questions, sir. Okay, step and then we'll so, what's your question, sir? Um, good day, Mr. Mora. I'm Jordan Villana, and I'm studying at Baliog University. My question for you is, what if both of the, in the scenario of separate parents, what if both of the parents want to have their child? Thank you for your question. I will answer this question in my own point of view. By law, a child under seven years younger, by, by, okay. by law, children under seven years must stay with the parent, but in my opinion, that's not always the case. Um, it depends on who is the more responsible parent, parent for me. If the mother is doing irresponsible acts like um, gambling, uh, drinking, and etc., then I think it should stay with the father. But if the father is the one doing those irresponsible acts, then it should go with the mother. But if the if the child is of legal age, then I think it's up to the child to decide who he or she wants to stay with. I have a follow-up question, sir. Uh, how how will their how will their how will they fight for their rights to the child? The parents can fight for their rights to the child through law. I think that's the only way to answer that question. It's up to the law to decide who the child goes to. That's pretty much all I can say about it. Okay, thank you for your answers. Is there anyone who would like to ask? Hello, sir. I'm John Patrick and Mr. My question is, what is the psychological effect of the child's preservation of their parents? Thank you for your question. Um, I think the psychological effect of having separate parents is that most of the time, most of the time, the child tends to be a bit rebellious, meaning that he is lacking of attention. But it's not always the case. It can be that they are depressed or, um, let's see, or insecure in the sense that they are no longer complete as a family. They're, these are examples of the psychological effects that can happen to the child. How can the best way to help the child in this situation is to make the child realize that he or she is not alone. The child should feel that there is still someone there to guide him in his life. If the child is guided well, he or she will eventually overcome these psychological effects. We just have to be patient for their sake. Thank you, sir. So, by the way, how's the audience? Uh, can you please give a round of applause for our guest speaker? Uh, can you make a So, Mr., have you enjoyed the show? Yes, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I relate to your topic. Your topic is about the child who want to choose uh, where to stay, uh, to his father or to his mother. Uh, my question is, what if the child is uh, want to choose stay with their auntie or uncle? Is it good? I think that's, a fine, uh, that's just a good decision because in that way you are neutral. You are not really choosing sides between your parents. That's 
I forgot to include that in my answer. I think that's a better option for the channel. Because uh, they can agree on to choose, for example, in weekdays, he can stay with their, with his mother, or in weekends, he can choose to stay with his mother. That way, there is more flexibility in time for the mother and the father with their child. That's fine. Uh, you know, Mr. Borja, I'm living with my auntie because I have my, I have my problems with my parents, so that I ask this question. Oh, um, well, that's unfortunate, but uh, that's <laughs> The situation is that you're you're not I'm not living with my parents. You're not living with your parents, okay? Um, is it okay to live with my auntie because they? What is your reason for not living with your parents? Uh, because they they don't want to uh, to <laughs> want to push me to study here in Baguio University. Because financial problems. Uh, right. because if your parents are not supporting you but your auntie is, then I think it's a better decision to just stay with your auntie because your future is more important than anything uh, else. So opinion. is it okay to stay with my auntie and support me for my study? If your parents won't do it, then yes, it's better to stay with your auntie. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mora. Uh, I am <laughs> Uh, so, Mr. Borna, how are you feeling? Same sort of giving an answer to those who asked you a while ago. I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, I'm not really tired. Um, I'm actually glad he, he asked me a question like that. Um, just to clear things up. Okay, uh, thank you for that wonderful answer. Uh, would you mind uh, joining us in the center? Kenzie Talk Show and Bali University, we would like to award this certificate of appreciation to Mr. Lawrence Borja for having participated in the Kenzie Talk Show given this day, this 15th day of December 2016. Thank you.